Hello everyone, this is Mike with Wright Trailers and VIP Restroom Trailer. Today we're going to go over the simple setup of one of our three station VIP restroom trailers. Now while this isn't a professional video on everything how to, this will give you a very good idea if you purchased one of these units from us or are considering purchasing a VIP restroom trailer from Wright Trailers of how easy they are to set up and how worry free anyone can be trained to do this. First we're going to take a look at some of the tools required to set up a VIP restroom trailer. So as you can see by our assortment of tools here, it's a very simple set of tools that you need. You'll need a level, preferably with a magnetized base, a speed wrench with a three quarter inch deep wall socket, half inch drive, also a half inch ratchet, along with an adjustable wrench, and then you'll need a 9 16 wrench, and we use a quarter inch drive ratchet with a 9 16 deep wall socket. Now one note to mention, we do also use a ratcheting wrench, which does speed up the process of some of the tightening and loosening of the nuts and bolts that you'll see in this video. All of these tools easily fit in our tool bag that we have here photoed. So one of the first things you want to do when you pull onto a site with the VIP restroom trailer is you're going to disconnect it from the tow vehicle, which we've already done as we see here. What's very important and makes your life a lot easier is to level the trailer as much as you can front to back with the tongue jack on the front of the trailer. By doing this, you save yourself a lot of time and extra effort leveling the unit without the use of the tongue jack. So we're going to use our level. As I mentioned, the magnetized base is convenient. We'll place it on the tongue of the trailer here, check for level front to back. As we can see by the level, in this case, we're fairly close. And then we're also going to check left to right to see how level we are there. We find that putting it up here on the stone guard is a pretty level spot. We can see that the trailer is leaning a little bit to the passenger side, which is no big deal. We'll take care of that in the next steps when we level the trailer. So going forward, when we look at how this trailer is set up, a lot of times our customers may want to jump to setting up the steps or the platforms, but it's very important that you do not skip this leveling step. By skipping the leveling step, you have to go back and you're causing yourself a lot of extra work. So we're going to go through how to basically level up this trailer with the four jacks that are underneath the trailer. And as we can see underneath the trailer, it's a scissor type jack that we're going to deploy using our speed bar with a three quarter inch speed wrench. So we'll simply take our speed bar with a three quarter inch deep wall socket. Now if you are setting this up on soft ground like grass or dirt, we do recommend putting in some kind of stability pad like a piece of wood or hard plastic. That way your jack doesn't sink into the ground as the unit's used. In this case, we're on a fairly compact surface. So we're gonna go ahead and deploy the jacks on our existing crushed asphalt. So first, we're just gonna deploy them down to all four of them touch. Now once you have all four down, now you're gonna go back and think about which way does the unit need to go. In this case, we were fairly level front to back, but left to right, the passenger side needed to come up. What that means, we need to further deploy those jacks on that side of the trailer to raise the trailer up. We will do that using the three quarter inch socket and our ratchet, because they're a little bit harder to turn. And just as a basic, these jacks are a, a uh, lefty loosey righty tighty, meaning going to the right, turning it to the right, is going to deploy the jack. Turning left, will raise the jack. So in this case, on this side, I want to raise the trailer up, so I want to lower the jack. I'm going to go to the right with our jack. Now we're going to go back to our level up front here. We'll just check and see how close we're getting. So we're actually getting fairly close. We'll go ahead and go back to the back. We're gonna raise that side up, so we're raising the whole side of the trailer up. Once again, we're gonna go back to the front. We wanna check level. Why are you doing this? We're leveling side to side, but also check your front to back to make sure we don't need to make another adjustment. So we'll check front to back. Still pretty good there. We'll check our side to side. And we need to just go a little bit more. So again, 
This is kind of a trial and error. Every surface is a little different. You don't want to go too far each interval though because you may cause yourself more work. We'll go back to the back because again we're leveling the side, keeping the unit level front to back. All right, we'll go check our level one more time. This should put us in a pretty close spot. And we see front to back, we're in pretty good shape. And looking left to right, we're level. So we've leveled the unit now at this point. If you happen to be on a surface that's sloping either way, you may also want to chalk the tires for safety. In this case, we're on level ground. The jacks are in place. You won't get a lot of rocking of the unit. Next, we're gonna go ahead and deploy our platforms. Now this is a two-step process, and you're gonna need both your 9 16 wrench and your deep wall socket 9 16 along with the adjustable wrench, and I'll show you why you need all. So the easiest way to do this is to look at the steps of what you need to do to deploy the steps. The first one, there's a rubber grommet here that's holding the step attached to the stair platform. The reason for that, when you're going down the road, it prevents the step from swinging out from your platform. We must undo this rubber holder first. It just simply pulls up, it's a rubber T-handle. And next, you'll notice that now allows this to come out. So before we drop the platform, down here, these are jam nuts. When this unit is shipped, you'll see the jam nut will be all the way up to the top here. You wanna make sure that's loosened so we have space or threads like we show here. That can be done with the adjustable wrench. Simply place it onto the nut, loosen it, and then go down to about where I show here. The reason that's important is when we drop down the platform, these feet are used to raise and lower and level the platform by simply screwing out the foot. If this jam nut is still engaged here, you will not be able to turn the foot. So very important to loosen these two jam nuts and then have your feet about equal here. Once that's done, lower your step back down. And now we're gonna go through deploying the platform. There's two nuts and bolts that hold this on. It's easiest to disconnect the platform from your bracket that holds the unit to the trailer. So do that first. Now this is uh, same thing, lefty loosey, righty tighty. In this case, we're loosening these. So we wanna go to the left um, with each of the nut and the bolt. So we'll loosen this. Very important to note, some of the units will have a washer uh, in front of or in front of the nut or bolt or sometimes in between here is a spacer. So just make sure you note notate that. So when you set the unit up and then break it down to reassemble everything, the washers are always back in the same location. And as you take this bolt out, it's easiest to kind of use your leg a little bit just to support your step right here. That prevents this from coming down. Also, it gives you some flexibility to kind of manipulate this to get it off. And you just want to pull the bolt through. And then as you bring this out, we're gonna pull the step out with the platform. So it sets down just like that. All right, so now at this point, we have the platform down and the step in the down position. The nut and bolt that we took out to re release our platform. We're gonna put it back through our bracket here. And then we need to take off just the flat bar here, not from the side of the trailer, but our flat bar that's holding, it being held in place with the nut and the bolt. So we'll go ahead and take that off. And we always like when you take these off, make sure and put your nut and bolt back on the bracket just as it came out. That way when you put it in the storage closet, it's easier to retrieve that. We're gonna take this and we'll place it in our maintenance closet. Usually I do this in, in stages. So you would go through and set up all three stations at the same time. That way you're not uh, kind of doing one individually. So I'll just simply place a bracket inside our maintenance closet here. And we're gonna go back around now we're gonna check levelness on the platform. So in this case, we're gonna use our level again, and we're checking for how it's level coming out away from the trailer and how it's level going front to back of the trailer. So we'll place our level on here, and we'll see the bubble is way that way, meaning our step needs to come up, which makes sense. We had to level the trailer up that way, so pretty typical here. Easiest way to do this, set your level off to the side. I'm gonna go ahead and lift this up just prop your shoulder upon it. And in this case, we want the platform to go up. So we're gonna unscrew each of the legs. 
And again, you're kind of estimating. We've done this a lot, so we typically know how far to adjust these. But again, a little bit goes a long way. Or if you need to go a long way, go a little bit more. So we're just gonna turn these counterclockwise to the left. It's lefty-loosey, real simple. Put that back down. We'll take our level, put it here. And we'll see here we're pretty close, but we just still need a little bit more on that. I always like to go ahead and check our left to right while we're here. So we're really good uh, going from front to back of the platform. Just need to raise it up a bit more. And we'll check this level one more time. And we are really close, probably within a couple of turns. Make a few more minor adjustments here. All right, so we're level there. We're gonna check our left to right. And we are looking pretty good, maybe a little bit here. I always like to step on these too, sometimes on soft ground. If you don't step on it before, once you get it all set up, you could step on it if one leg sinks into the ground, especially on grass surfaces. You may have to go back through and re-level it, which is uh, not fun. So we're gonna step on it here. It looks pretty stable. I am just a little bit needing here, so we'll unscrew this one a touch more. Now we're stable and we're level both ways, so that looks great. At this point, we're done with the level. Now again, if you're setting up a three station, you would have done this step on all three units. Then you come back and do the handrails that we're gonna do next. So you wouldn't set up this station completely and then this one. It's not as efficient. You definitely wanna do all these steps I'm showing you for all three units or for a two unit on a two station unit. So we're gonna put the level down. At this point, we just need our 9 16 wrench and our 9 16 ratchet and default socket. We're gonna get two of the handrails, which the handrails in any of our two, three, four, and 10 station units, the handrails will be stored inside the maintenance closet. Um, you can see on this one, they store nicely. One note, uh, when you put those in there, make sure I have the set set out here for us. You always wanna put the end with the black turn knobs towards the far wall. The reason being is on this end, you have nuts and bolts. These nuts and bolts over time can rattle out and fall into the floor. If they fall out on transit, they're right here easy to reach. If you were to put this on the far wall, now you have to climb over the water tank to retrieve your nuts and bolts. So make sure always to put your black turn ends towards the far wall. Now we'll go ahead and install these on the platform. All of our hand rails will be labeled uh, left front, right front. In this case, it's a three station. The others would be left middle, right middle, left rear, right rear. So again, really easy. Over time, these can wear off. You may resharp your marker them. Now this is a rental unit. This is not a brand new unit for right trailers. So we're going through a unit that's been out several times on rental. Um, so you can see it's got pretty good durability. So right front, left front, they'll correspond. Right front, left front. And what I like to do before I go and take the nut or bolt out is we're gonna take and undo our black turn knob here. What that's gonna allow us to do is to place this end of the handrail into our stair right here. And just stick it in there. Go ahead and take your black turn knob and you're gonna thread it to screw it back into the bottom of the handrail. Now this doesn't have to be really, really tight, but you definitely wanna snug this up because what this does, it prevents the handrail from moving up and down. So as you tighten this up, go ahead and snug it down pretty good. I like to leave my handrail out here until I'm done with some other setup steps. So we'll do the left handrail next. Same procedure, unscrew our black turn knob, stick it into the step platform. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and secure the left handrail by securing our black knob here. Go ahead and tighten that down. And now we've got our two ends with the nuts and the bolts. Now, if you look on this one, uh, sometimes you can undo these by hand. If they're stuck on there, you can go ahead and use your ratchet in your socket. We'll take the nut and bolt out. Then we're gonna swing this around. Now, what's really important is again, all these platforms would be down if we're setting this up for a full event. We're just doing one stall here. I always like to keep my hand nearby. We wanna go in between the unit and where the bracket is. What can happen, sometimes you can have the rail go and contact the side of the trailer. Not really a great idea. Uh, any volunteers or other workers you have, 
Again, we've done this a lot, so we've evaluated pinch points and other danger points. Uh, in this case, I would recommend they wear gloves if it's their first time setting up. It does help if they were to get into a pinch point here. For some reason, if they didn't level this uh, platform correctly, you will find oftentimes that this will go and want to go against the trailer or be really far away from the trailer. If that's the case, likely you have an issue with the levelness of your platform. We've done a really good job leveling the platform, so our holes line up good here. The bolt is going to go from the door side away from the door. We'll put our nut in place. Just going to do it hand tight now. We'll take our ratchet and wrench here in a moment and tighten that up. Go ahead and move to our right hand rail. Same procedure here. We're going to take the nut off. And again, if you have those a little bit tight like that, not a big deal. It happens. Just get your ratchet and your wrench. Go ahead and loosen that up. And again, the bolt's going to go from the door side towards the outside of the door. Put the nut on there. These don't have to be lock nuts, so regular nuts are fine. This isn't something that's vibrating under use. And then we'll go ahead and tighten this up. Don't want to kill it, but you definitely want it snug. It's what secures the handrail in place. Do the same thing on this side. And then you don't have to have the ratcheting wrench, but it definitely makes it a little bit quicker. Now at this point, we've got the unit level. We're secure with our handrails. We've got the platform and stairs deployed. All right, so now that our stairs are set up on the unit, we're ready to go ahead and finish the mechanical connections to the VIP restroom trailer. Now there's two things that we need to do on this side of the trailer. One is hook up power. Each of our units has a short power cord. Now depending on the unit, you may have one or two. If our unit is equipped with a hot water heater, you have two 30 amp receptacles, in which case the hot water would require another 30 amp cord to be connected to power in order to have hot water. If you have a unit with two 30 amp plugs and you don't need the hot water, you can simply connect the main power source. Everything on the unit will work except for the hot water. The power cord is stored inside of the maintenance closet and typical RV type twist lock plug. See on the end here, we have a 30 amp twist lock. That'll go in to the plug. You'll notice the cord has a little indention or L. There's also that same prong on the electrical connection. So simply take that, you push it on and it's got a twist lock. So you push it in and then twist it to lock it. And then there's this turn ring right here. We're going to turn this ring and that actually mechanically connects it where it can't be pulled out. That secures it. Now the other end of the cord is a 30 amp RV. Now you can plug this into a 30 amp source or if you need to, you can adapt down from a 30 amp like we have here to a standard 15 amp three prong. Now it's very important to plug the unit into at least a 15 or preferably a 20 amp service. And the reason is the air conditioning unit, when it kicks on, it can draw a lot of current or amps. If you're hooked up to a, say a household residence that has a freezer or a refrigerator on the same service, it could trip the breaker in the house, thereby eliminating power to those appliances and to your VIP restroom trailer. Now, as I mentioned, inside the mechanical closet, we have storage for the handrails and our electrical plug. But you'll notice water-wise, there's an onboard tank. If you aren't able to have a garden hose hookup, which would go here, you can power all the water, supply all the water on the unit with the garden hose. Or if the unit's set up in place, you can fill the water tank with fresh water. And then there's a switch inside here that's for a water pump and you simply flip the switch up with power on the switch right here and it will turn on the onboard water pump. That will then provide water pressure throughout the whole entire unit. Now that being said, a very important note, the fresh water and the wastewater tanks must be empty before transport. These units are very sophisticated, but they're not made to tow down the road with fluids in their tanks because there's no baffle to prevent sloshing of the liquid. So water tank and waste tank must be empty. Now you'll see here on the side of this water tank, there's a clear tube. When this tank has water in it, that's basically your full gauge. If water is all the way up that tube, then your water tank is full. If it's halfway down, you're half empty. Now that being said, on the waste tank, obviously you can't see the waste tank like we can the water tank. Inside our maintenance closet, there's a button for waste. And if you push that with power on, this will illuminate a series of LEDs. It will show whether it's empty, a quarter, half, three quarter, or full. That is very accurate. Next to that, we have our air conditioning controls. This will turn on the AC in the unit. 
Usually we'd recommend around 70 degrees or no lower than about 66 degrees for keeping the air conditioning on and not freezing up in the unit. Above that are some other appliances that are necessary for safety on the unit. These should not be touched unless it's a qualified service technician that's troubleshooting a unit. The other switch next to our water pump is for the closet light. If you're hooking up at nighttime and you have 110 hooked to the trailer, you can flip that switch up and have the closet light on inside the trailer. Now once the power is hooked up and your water is either hooked up or your water tank is full, now you're ready to go in and just test the unit. We do like to, once we're set up, go in, we'll test the water faucet. We're also going to test the toilet flush, make sure we have water coming to all of our stalls and all of our sinks. Every time that we set up a restroom trailer, we're automatically having new trash bags in there. We do a triple sanitization and we go through and check our lighting 110 and do one final check around. So at this point, your restroom trailer is fully set up. You're ready to go. One last check of the paper towel holder. Make sure you got some extra toilet paper in there and you're all set. We appreciate you watching this video of how to set up a Wright Trailers VIP restroom trailer. We hope you find this helpful and we look forward to meeting you at a special event soon. Thank you for watching the Wright Trailers channel.